Hello, welcome. Take a moment, set this problem up, try it out, and then press play and we'll solve it together. Okay, so we're told that the speed of a tidal wave, S, okay, here is S, in hundreds of miles per hour. Don't let them get you, right? My experience is I often let them get me. I forget what they're saying, so I underline it. Don't let me forget that. Can be modeled by this equation, S equals the square root of T minus 2T plus 6, where T represents the time from its origin in hours, algebraically determining the time when S equals 0. Okay, so let's just write that down. S is 0, and it's the square root of T minus 2t plus 6. Now, when you have a situation where it, you have a polynomial equal to 0, they want you to do some kind of factoring. And here, if you're having a hard time factoring, one thing you can try, if nothing else is working, is switch the order of the terms. Negative 2t plus the square root of t plus 6. This is a common theme, actually, in a lot of problems where you're stuck. Just move things around and see if it helps you, and it does. Because, in general, you know that your pattern is quadratic-ish, if this power of this term is the square root of the power of this term. And it is here, because remember, when you have a quadratic function, you have something like ax squared plus bx plus c. We say it's quadratic because the x is being squared, and that's what quadratic functions are called. But these things can be factored. Any polynomial can be factored like a quadratic, potentially factored like a quadratic, if, if what? If this term equals this term squared, or if the square root of this term, of x squared, equals this term right here. And that's what we have in this situation. We have 0 equals negative 2t, plus this is the square root of t, so it's t to the 1 half power, that's square root. Remember that if you have the half power, that's the square root, the third power is the third root, and so on and so forth. And if we look at this, it's quadratic in nature, because this t, if we take it, the square root of t does equal this term right here is literally equal to t to the 1 half. So when that relationship exists, you have something that you can factor, potentially, as a quadratic. How do you do that? Typically, you use substitution. I, I wrote script. I said let. I'll write it in, in print. Let, well, I'll say, sorry, let u equal t. And then when I rewrite it, I get what? I get, sorry, t to the 1 half. So the next step is substitution. You let some letter equal this term right here, always that term. And if it's working out nicely, you'll get something that looks now even more quadratic. Right? Think about what I just did. The 6 is the same. u is t to the 1 half. And you have to square t to the 1 half because t to the 1 half squared, remember the laws of exponents, you multiply 2 by a half, that's just t to the first. That is this term right here. So if u is t to the 1 half, u squared is t. And now this is something we can factor. I'm going to divide everything by negative 1 get something a little bit friendlier, right? Just divide everything by negative 1. And now I can use whatever factoring technique works for me. I don't need the quadratic formula here because I'm looking for factors that multiply to negative 12 and add to negative 1. And that's negative 4 and 3, right? But I don't put a negative 4 here. I put a negative 2 because negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. So that, that would get us the negative 4 that we need. This is a quick technique in factoring when a is not 1. Now, two things could happen. 2u plus 3 could equal 0, or u minus 2 could equal 0. So if u minus 2 equals 0, u equals 2. And subtract 3, divide by 2. u equals negative 3, subtract by 3, divide by 2, halves. But remember, we're trying to solve for t. And in our case, u equals t to the 1 half. right? So if u equals negative 3 halves, uh, then what do we know? Well, if u equals negative uh, 3 halves, we try to find t by squaring both sides. So negative 3 halves equals t to the 1 half. Solve for t, square both sides. So t would equal 9 fourths. In the other case, if u equals 2, that means t to the 1 half is 2. We square both sides. Now the algebra, I didn't show it here, but I'll show it on this side if you square both sides looks like this. 1 half times 2 is just 1. That's the law of exponents. And 2 squared is 4. So t is 4 and 9 halves. But, you know, you could grab on a calculator. If you did, you'd see that this thing only crosses the x-axis at one, at one time. Or I suppose, uh, I suppose what I should say is um, one of these is, is not going to work. 
So if you plug in 4 and if you plug in 9 fourths, you'll see only one of them works and one of them is extraneous. I only know to check because I saw the graph, but also anytime there's a square root, I'm pretty wary on the regents. They, they tend to set up square root problems where you're solving for a variable where you do get a result uh, that is not actually going to work. So it looks like it works, everything looks great, but if you plug it in, you see it's not going to work. Um, in this case, let's plug in, let's plug both in and you'll see what I mean. If I plug in 4, watch how nicely everything works. If I plug in 4, I get, um, it says that s is supposed to equal 0 when t is 4. Let's see. So if I have the square root of t, so the square root of 4, minus 2 times 4, plus 6, it works, right? Because s equals square root of 4 is 2, minus 8, negative 2, plus, uh, 2 minus 8, negative 6, excuse me, plus 6 is 0. That works. It's supposed to be when t is 4, s is 0. But in this case, when I plug in 9 fourths, I get s equals the square root of 9 fourths minus 2 times 9 fourths plus 6. What's that? Well, we get the square root of a fraction is just 3 over 2, square root of top, square root of bottom, minus 18 over 4 plus 6. That's just 3 halves minus 9 halves plus uh, 6, and that does not equal 0, right? What does that equal? 3 minus 9 is negative 6 halves, so negative 6 halves, which is negative 3, plus 6 is 3. Not what we need, right? That equals 3. Um, so that's an extraneous solution, so we can reject that. I'll just scroll up. We can say reject. And you should write the word reject so they know what you are talking about. Next, they ask you, do I have room here? I don't know if I copied the next part of the question, sorry. The next part, I'll just say it. How much faster uh, was the tidal wave after one hour? So after one hour, how much faster after one hour versus after, versus after three hours? Uh, to the, and they want to the nearest mile per hour. Mile per hour. And uh, so how much faster, sorry, this is sloppy, how much faster was S after one hour versus after three hours to the nearest, sorry, to the nearest mile per hour? And it says justify your reasoning. Now this is ju it's just a matter of plugging in t equals 1 and t equals 3. So I'm going to say s when t is 1 is the square root of 1 minus 2 times 1 plus 6. And that equals 1 minus 2 plus 6, which is 5. So at 1 hour, it's moving at a speed of 5. Don't forget, 500 miles per hour. It's very tricky. And the other one is at the 3 hours, so it's the square root of 3 minus 2 times 3 plus 6. Well, well, the only thing left is the square root of 3 because you have minus 6 plus 6. And we want to find the difference of these two things. So 5 minus the square root of 3, it's, it's about 3.267 and it keeps going. It's irrational. But the answer is not that. It's, this is in hundreds of miles per hour. They want the nearest mile per hour. So take about 3.267 times 100 and I get 326.7 or to the nearest mile per hour, 327 miles per hour. And that's it. We've justified our reasoning. We've showed our work. We are done. All right. Thank you.